gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Completely unsanctioned and uncensored by any athletic commission whatsoever. Our hosts sitting table side are Big D, David Falcone. Crash Dummy Corleone. And the Ultimate Fighter Season 31 winner, Kurt the Herd Hollyball. This championship podcast is brought to you by Hatchet Industries. And now, it's time for the Contenders and the Pretenders. It should be good. Okay, I'm going to press up. Record here. Let's we got that holiday recap. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 21 of the Contender and the Pretender. This is the pre or the post Thanksgiving, <laughs> the post Thanksgiving show. So, like on the last show, we talked a little bit. Um, I think Big D said he was hosting for the first time at his new house and being an overall Thanksgiving host. So let's start out with that. D, how was uh, how was your first host of Thanksgiving? First host uh, went smoother than I thought. Definitely, you know, because you're the one responsible for. I mean, everyone brings a dish or something, right? Sort. But to me, proteins are the most important. So of course, I'm the one doing. The turkey, well, the turkey, the turkey breast, and uh, I did a prime rib. So to me, that's the most important thing. Everyone else got their dish, so I'm trying to entertain slash still have show the smoker, you know. But overall, went smooth, you know. The cleanup parts what sucks, and of course, my wife is uh, seven months into her pregnancy, so that cleanup fell on me, and uh, yeah, screw hosting for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like I said last last week on the show. I said last year, I think that was, I tried to do a prime rib, um, looked up some recipes, and came out amazing. Everybody loved it. Was that the first time you ever did prime rib? With the end, yeah. That was the first time I ever actually did prime. Um, but really, the funny thing is prime rib is a cut of the ribeye. Right. You know, it's just a whole ribeye roast. Yeah, it's a rib roast. So the only really way you can mess that up is if you go over temperature, yep. if you dry it out. So the key is just... Don't fuck it. Don't let it go too long, because that would be a big ass hunk of meat to waste. Yeah, and it's not cheap either. But uh, man, I, I love some. Uh, I, first off, I love ribeye. I think it's my favorite cut of steak. <clears throat> but then, uh, you know, the way we do it on smoking the prime rib always comes out really good. So another thing I we said, you know, um, I fried turkey, I baked the turkey, and I talked about you know picking them off, picking all the meat off the bones, what was left over and doing a turkey gumbo so that's actually what big d has in front of him right now he's going to be my taste tester of this turkey gumbo um so we'll, we'll see what he thinks i want him to give me an honest opinion i don't think by any means i'm one of the best cooks in the world there's just certain things that i really enjoy cooking boiling crawfish is one cooking gumbo is two so dude yeah. let's uh but you know what they say even if you're not a good cook in louisiana you're still a better cook than most of the u.s that is true. And I tell you, I'm, I'm somebody that travels a lot. So I eat cooking everywhere, all different states, different countries as well. And uh, I definitely think that down south and definitely in Louisiana, we're holding the standard really high. Yeah, that's also why our obesity rate is as well. <laughs> that is true also. But uh, Real quick though, what's your weight looking like after Thanksgiving? Uh, <laughs> I like that pause there. So here's the thing. The uh, the week before Thanksgiving, I did like a little four day diet. Just drank all water, no alcohol. I uh, was basically fasted throughout the day, eating one time a day. And I was Wednesday. I did a big training session Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and my weight was one seventy two. I think one seventy two, one seventy three. So it's not too bad. Oh no. Now. After Thanksgiving, we're talking beer, we're talking turkey, 
We're talking ham, dressing, prime rib. I got on my mom's scale and I was fully clothed, but I was 195. And I'm thinking, the scale's got to be wrong. Like, there's no way. I'm, I'm not 195, which, of course, I wasn't. I had shoes, jeans. So, 192. 191. 191, officially. Okay. 191, 192, which might be the most I've ever weighed in my life. But, yeah. hey, man, what do you expect? It's what, Thanksgiving. Yeah, I mean, you got to think. That's all sodium. I don't have a fight blocked. Give me a fight on the table, and let's go. <laughs> we, we got some... We'll, we'll do some call outs later on in the. Right, we have the call out of the week. Call out, yeah, we got the call out of the week. Um, you know, but hopefully we can get us a fight schedule for next year and, yeah, you know, I'll have to look before, forward to something. Before I dive into the gumbo, I want to say our third ho- co host over here came down with a touch of the flu. Or slash, I think he had a bad tender hookup. That's my <laughs> that's my suspicion. But he said he got the flu, so he couldn't make it in today. Kurt did bring him gumbo, so you cannot say that. I did, so you know what? And I brought a lot, but I guess now since Blake's not here, he's going <laughs> to take, have to take it home to Katie. Yep, there you go. All right, let's dive So let me know what you think, man. And I'll All tell right. you some of the ingredients. And uh, You got turkey in here? Yes. There is turkey. All right, we're going to go with the rice consistency with the roux first. Okay, let me, let me, let me see what you think. Did good on the rice. The roux itself, I got to give you credit. Thank you actually did the roux from scratch. No, the roux, well, the roux is not technically, uh, I'll tell you what it is. Is I mean, that it, it's, it's, No, it, no, it's, frick no, this is not box gumbo. That is legit roux. Okay. It's legit roux. I didn't, I didn't actually hand do the roux. I did a, I'll, I'll tell you my recipe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, no, no, it's not, I don't think it's a secret. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I really kind of wanted to fuck with you on this and kind of hate on it. But uh, I like that the it, the roux came out. It has a thickness to it. Yeah. Which I prefer over the runny, watery kind right. that some people do. Because to me, that's just like a big soup. And I have a very big problem with soup in general. But I got to give it to you, man. You taste the different... The turkey definitely, you can taste like, the, you know, different flavors in there. Not your typical gumbo. I think yep. you season your turkey based on baking it and frying it. So you get those in there. But I got to give it to you. You did a good job. Thank you. Thank you. As much as I wanted to talk shit about it. But I got to give you credit. Blake, you're uh, missing out. Yeah, I put, I put a lot of effort into that gumbo. Because here's the thing. Like, like I said before, I started with the turkeys that we did for Thanksgiving, right? So, and the turkeys are shot up, injected every bit of the meat that I can that how, I can do. How much butter would you say you should? Oh. Uh, <laughs> With including the basting. Um, I would say definitely a whole jar or or container. Yeah. If if you're having a guess, easily. <laughs> So that's a calorie but, fucking dip. But dinner. but but that's mixed with Creole seasonings. I mean that that's all seasoned up, <laughs> shot into every piece of meat. So one turkey was baked, right? And that was probably the juiciest turkey. And I actually did a little video of where, man, I just kind of cut the turkey, carved it, mashed, and there was just butter and juice just running out everywhere. Same thing. I uh, shot a turkey up and I fried the turkey. So in that gumbo is fried turkey, baked turkey, four different types of sausages. And just to ensure that I had enough protein and meat, I went and bought a whole chicken, did the same thing, shot it up, fried the whole chicken, nice. deboned it into the gumbo. Hey, like I said, I'm not one to lie. I would love to sit here and <laughs> talk shit, but I got to say that's a good job. Now, as far as my roux goes, you can buy, and this is the thing, I will never brag on a box gumbo because to me that's not real gumbo. If you buy it out of a box and you just mix it up, it's not real gumbo. Not hating on anybody that does their gumbo that way, but to me, we're hating on it. It's called (laughs) taking the easy way out. Yeah, well, it's It's, simple. It doesn't. It's simple. It's easy. But I feel like if you're gonna do a gumbo in Louisiana, then you got to do it with a. I mean, not in a box. That gumbo probably took me six six hours. About six hours. Yeah, six hours. (laughs) But uh, it's you, you can buy it's already like a. A root in a jar. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. You know, you know what I'm talking about? There's a powder too. So the way I do it is I'll throw all of my Holy Trinity in mm-hmm. the pot with my sausage and I'll let that not burn but almost burn. That way the sausage gets a little 
brown to it. Yeah. The vegetable sweat down, and I'll keep going back and forth and remove all that from the pot. But now you got a little burn residue on the bottom. Not burnt, but. I know what you mean, and I like that. There's some of that may no. have a problem with that. I enjoy nope. that. It's not burnt, but it's a. It's flavor. Yeah. So then I don't. There is no water in that gumbo. Okay. I have All to. chicken stock. Hey, that's the so way. So I'll take the first quart of chicken stock and I'll go and I'll turn on like medium heat and I'll scrape the bottom of the pot. Right. Yeah. So I get all of that flavor off the bottom. Yeah. And then there's a, uh, and, and it's, it's a, like a roux powder and it's kind of like just flour. Right. And uh, I'll just kind of chop that and I'll just, you know, whisk it until it gets like a thickness. And then I'll put, for this one, I did like five or six quarts. I made a huge pot, five or six quarts of chicken stock um, in the pot. So once I did that, I put two jars of the the already burnt roux in there and just, you let it dissolve. Once that dissolved, I put everything in the pot and let it cook. Yeah. So how, so you do this, what, the day after Thanksgiving? Yep. Well, we got some major updates going on in fantasy, football. in fantasy football i don't even want to check right now well my i'm not going to talk about fantasy football right now i am beating your ass though yeah i want to let you know that just so we know. i do want to talk who about hasn't it. in that one league i want to talk about because that's the only one i'm doing good in. who <laughs> hasn't I, my worst fantasy we might get to that my worst fantasy season ever <laughs> you can blame it on uh you know all the training and stuff i guess yeah no, like I said, I gotta give you the two thumbs up on the on the gumbo, and don't forget, man, we're gonna if we're at two, the two fifty or three hundred. I think you said three hundred. All right, so you gotta free some of this. When we hit three hundred, you gotta bring. We're gonna pick our guest at random. Hey, I'm down. Subscriber at random, and but you know, I want it to be fresh, so I'll just do a new pot. But you're gonna, same with it. you're gonna make that many damn turkeys. Just I'm just gonna make. I'll do, I'll do a fried turkey, but man. Normally what I do, if I'm just making this gumbo, not using turkeys, a lot of time I will go get the rotisserie chickens from like Walmart. Yeah, that's it. They give yeah. some of the best flavor. They do. They're, they're just, you know, cooked over the fire at Winn-Dixie. And same thing at Walmart. And I think those are some of the best protein to add. Doesn't matter what it is. You can boil your, your own chicken down. There's no problem with that. I do that a lot too. But I just think that the rotisserie chickens, definitely. Yeah, I mean, you're getting extra flavor in there without that. Yep. No, for sure. So you're not bringing this. We do have a uh, Friendsgiving this evening. And you're not bringing this? No, I'm actually going to fry another turkey. I got a turkey right now. I'm being prepped up. I'm going to okay. do the same thing. And you can try my fried turkey too. Let me know what you think. I did. Well, hey, it's a good thing. I didn't get fried turkey this year. Really? You know Dude, really and truly, like I said, I fried before. My brother usually does. Like, we'll take orders and fry. Mm -hmm. It makes all the sense in the world if you're doing that. You just toss the turkey for your home yep. in. Buying the oil for one turkey... Fucking more, it's triple the price of the turkey. So it's going to cost you about a hundred bucks. Yeah, I just like the, that. because you have to have the big. I don't even know how many gallons it is. I would imagine it's a couple gallons, but they're like forty, the uh, fifty, fifty something a piece. That's what I'm saying. So no, that's uh. But I tell you what, I tell you what I, want, I would like to do for Christmas also because as you know, we own the Jim Grace United team, Jukal team, Halaba. So, um, and I've always wanted to do this where I do like turkey giveaways, man, and. Like I said, I love to cook. I love to boil crawfish, seafood, gumbo, and like I like the deep fry turkeys and stuff. So, man, I would like to do a bunch of deep fried turkeys. All right, I got a challenge for us. Okay. Maybe we could do during Christmas. It's going to cost a little bit of money, I think. Okay. We're going to attempt a turducken. I'm down to try it. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about? Yep. That is a chicken stuffed inside the turkey, and the turkey duck. is stuffed inside of a duck. So here's the thing. I was going to put a duck in that gumbo. I just, I couldn't find one. Yeah, I don't know where you necessarily go buy a duck. You can get them in Winn-Dixie, but they're going to be in like a, you got to go look for them. I've seen them many times where the where the hens are. They're going to be frozen. Mm -hmm. And I think I did find one. They're not cheap. They're expensive, but I wouldn't have had time to defrost it. Yeah. I just think it's, it, I don't know if it'll be good or not, but I definitely have an interest in that turducken. No, I'm down to try it. Yeah. We're going to bake it. And if we bake it, it'll come out good. We'll shoot all that stuff up with a couple containers of butter butter handles everything <laughs> that is true i can't argue there what and reason why i'm a plus size uh person i would blame on my childhood i was a, quite a picky eater surprisingly so my mom then you know they used to make red beans or stuff that would go a long way for a family you know we had me my two older brothers 
I had a thing where I didn't want anything. I wanted the noodles in butter or the rice in butter. Like instead of like putting the red mm-hmm. beans on it, I just ate rice and butter. You know what? Brie does the same stuff. It's fucking delicious. If rice was not, and really, if there was a way to make butter healthy, like, and still be butter, not some bullshit, I'd probably still eat fucking daily rice and butter. <laughs> fucking love I don't it. know about that, but. but yeah. So, no, I will get, like I said, plus A plus in the gumbo. Surprise me. We're going to fuck up a turducken for Christmas, though. So. Let's do it. Okay. I'm down. Quick question on, uh, I see, you know, you see a lot of holiday videos going on during Thanksgiving holiday season. One I saw was a dude saying, you know, someone's like naming all those plates, all the uh, meal or the food they got brought. And they said stuffing, but it was in a pan, like corn mm-hmm. render. And the dude's like, that's not stuffing if it's not stuffed inside of something. Because technically for it to be stuffing, it should be stuffed inside. Yeah, I, I guess. So, I what, so what's your thought on that? Um, I don't know. Some people call it stuffing. Uh, I want to say our family's always called it dressing. Yeah. I feel like that's what you got to say. I, I guess it makes sense. If you're yeah. not going to stuff it in something, it's dressing. Yeah, maybe, maybe so. But yeah. Anyway, so, Kurt, I think we do have a little segment we gotta get, we're going to get to. And I told you, at least some you had a little time to prepare. Yep. So we got Kurt's call out of the week. Who we got? All right. Well, first off, we're going to get to this call out in one second. Um... We did last week, of course, coming off of his big win over Jordan Lovett. I gave the call out to Chase Hooper, um, super talented guy, jiu-jitsu guy. I think that'll be a fun fight. Um, but here's the thing. In the UFC, you just never know what the, what the matchmakers are thinking. You never know who the matchmakers want to match. So that's why we're going to do this call out. Do a couple call outs. See what happens. We're going to uh, do a call out a week. Call out, a we're going to do a call out a week. See what happens. Right? Um, I did throw my name in the hat and said I would step up and fight Bobby Green Saturday. Of course. Too many guys in front of me. I I didn't feel that I would get that call anyway, but why not go ahead and um, throw a name in the hat just just to let them know you're willing to fight. But call out of the week. Groovy. Lando Venata. Okay. You know who that is? I know the name. I'm trying to picture the... He made his debut into the UFC, fought Tony Ferguson, and actually dropped Tony like quite a few times. Ultimately, Tony ended up getting the win. Uh, I don't think he's got the best UFC record, but I'm pretty sure he's still a UFC lightweight, still signed with the UFC. Uh, he's always a guy that's kind of up and down, up and down, but the dude, he always brings a fight, and I just feel like that would be a fun, fan-friendly fight. Yeah. Dude comes a fight. He actually fought Matt Viola in 2018 when I fought Shane Burgos on the Madison Square Garden card. So he's I want to say they was right before, right after us. So he's had quite a long UFC tenure then. Yeah, I want to say he's probably got probably 13 UFC fights, something like that. Right, so, uh, But I can see that's a realistic matchup I can see having. I want to say... Um, there's 92, supposedly, 92 lightweight fighters signed to the UFC. I'm one of the 92. It looks like my ranking in that 92 is like 55. I want to say Lando is somewhere around 48, 47. Yeah. So, I mean, that kind of makes sense. You always want to call the guy that's above you, you know, the guy that's ranked a little bit higher. So, getting that fight could be a good fight. Yeah. So, like I said, at this point, first fight back into the UFC. I mean, you had the ultimate fighter fight, mm-hmm. but we're going to aim for a fight that's going to lead to a bonus and a win, of course, but a bonus would be nice. And that fight can definitely lead to a bonus because, I mean, Lando likes to fight, man. I've been a fan of him ever since Madison Square Garden, and he was already, him and Matt Viola was a potential opponent for me right then and there because I knew I wouldn't stay at featherweight much longer. That yeah. fight with Shane Burgos was at featherweight, but initially when... I went back to the UFC. I took a featherweight opening, but I was already at lightweight. I already went on a little run, won the Titan FC lightweight championship from Jay-Z Cavalcanti. And my thought was, I'm not going back to 45. I'm going to stay at 55. And then I got the call for the contender series. And they said, look, you want it? It's at 45. And I said, okay. And I took it. But I knew it wasn't going to be permanent. 
Yeah, you actually did have a fifty-five fight in that run. I did. So. Yeah, I did. And uh, eventually, after the Shane Burgos loss in Madison Square Garden, um, I decided to go up a weight class, which I fought another super tough, highly ranked guy in Tiago Moises. Yeah. So, who's also still in the UFC? Or did he? Still, no, he's still. He's got okay. a. I want to say. I know he was in there recently. No, I he he was lost his fight. last fight. That's uh, why I didn't know he was a recent. Saint fight. Dennis Benoit. Yeah. But he was on a little win streak, I think, before that. Yeah. Okay, so he's still safe. More yeah, yeah, he's still in. I don't, I don't see him going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. See, we got the call out of the week. I really need Sucker Punch to, uh, you know, Kurt. I, hey, I think y'all did great with Kurt's career. Y'all helped him out a lot. Can we get him a fight? Because, like I said, I'm We look, working, baby. We I, working. We February, working. March. Let's that's go. Our, yeah, that's the problem, though, is I'm looking ahead to UFC. Card wise, yeah. they are already filling cards. They are. February. Man, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, I'm, been, I'm, I gotta be on that radar somewhere. Yeah, I'm on that radar somewhere. I ain't worried about it because I know for sure I'm signed, I'm sealed, I'm delivered to no. the UFC. This is not a thing about stressing like, oh, no, Kurt's contract's intact. He is a UFC rostered fighter. My thing is, we have so much shit happen, in like with social media. You know what I'm saying, like. If had you won the Ultimate Fighter ten years ago, that shit stays relevant for a very long time in the people's mind. It's still a very it's a prestigious honor, it's a great award. But when you get to be six, eight, six months, eight months, you got, you know, and get so many fights happening, it's just easy to lose that momentum that you work so hard to build up. And that's why I don't want to see it happen in fucking May or June. I definitely want to see a February, March fight for you. And then that would set you up as long as you stay injury free to pull to pull off two or right. three fights in the year. If you get your first fight in May or June, it's still doable, but it's yeah, a lot tougher to run a three fight thing. Uh, but since we did talk about the bonus structure of the UFC right there, about and I know and I think we may have discussed this before, but get your thoughts on. To me, I'd love to see you on a big pay per view card, you know. But I think the best fight, the best place would be a fight night on the main card of a fight night. And I say that because let's say you have, you know, either a not a great submission, great knockout, or just a great fight in general. When you're on those, when you're on those big pay per view cards, it doesn't matter if your knockout was better or your fight was better. If the headliner gets a finish, it seems like they almost get the bonus, even if it wasn't is. Almost impressive. every single time. So that's why I say at least you're cutting that shot out if you get on a good yeah. fight night guard. Yeah, you know, it really doesn't matter to me. I, the only thing I don't know if if I would want to is fighting in the apex. You know? No crowd. Yeah, yeah, with the no crowd. I, I think you still can bring a couple family members. I don't exactly know how it works. If it was like the contender um, series, how that was. Yeah. He had like four tickets, I think. But now here's the thing, though. I'm comfortable in the apex just because I spent – you know, almost two months there and fought twice there. So and arguably, I mean, granted, you've had nothing but exciting fights and primarily finishes, but without the crowd, your record right now is what? Three, three and oh. Yep. Yeah. Three and oh. And, and like, but that's the thing, man. Like I've always done better in those small shows. And I feel like one of the biggest humps to get over was winning that fight in the UFC behind the big crowd. You know, behind all the lights, the camera, and the action. And, man, but I, I've had a, so much experience in my throughout my career that I was finally able to put that aside. And at UFC 292, I was able to get the job done. So, yeah. I mean, now you got the win in the crowd. So, I think now that, that the pressure's off the shoulders. And, you know, boom, it's out there. Now, now I'm just ready to go. So, it really doesn't matter to me, man. I'll, I'll, I like fighting in Las Vegas. So the only way you're not going to fight in the Apex right now in Las Vegas is if they're doing a big event at the T-Mobile, which would probably be a pay-per-view card. Other than that, if it's going to be a fight night, they don't have many places that they're going to do fight nights other than the Apex. Apex. So, Yeah, the one thing I like about Vegas, if you were to get a fight there, is one thing Vegas does great. They make it easy for you to find a room, yep. and they make it easy for you to find an affordable flight because they are banking on you gambling your life savings away. <laughs> Yep, and so, you can always go after the fight and find a beer. True. That is Boston, you could not. <laughs> Very true. 
So I think in, in the MMA world, kind of a slow week, and we're about to get into some more slow time. So I think we got some talks about trying to get some guests on to kind of fill the fight talk void in the future. But uh, biggest thing was uh, the PFL card this week with the acquisit the official acquisition of yep. Bellator, and not to really touch on the card as much, but they're they are planning on doing a champion versus champion big pay per view card. If you had to just pick one side, you favoring the PFL guys or the Bellator guys? You know, I think I'm going to have to go with the Bellator guys. Um, I think they legitimately got some of the best guys. And one thing I'm curious, I'm curious to know the numbers for this PFL event because that was their first pay-per-view event. That event was on uh, pay-per-view. Yeah. yeah. So it'd be cool to see the numbers, man. Hopefully it does well. I mean. It, I don't. I mean, it depends on what your expectation. Like, would it, right. I don't know what a pay-per-view needs to hit to – be considered well. I mean, the UFC on average only gets, like if it's not a John Jones or a McGregor or, or at this point probably um, O'Malley. Mm-hmm. It's not one of those. They're only hitting like in the 300,000 yeah, yeah, it's, it's So It's not crazy. So I'm guessing if you could break 100,000 on a PFL card, that to me would be a win, I would think. But I don't know if they're going to hit. I mean, the name value just wasn't there on this one. I yeah. think the Bellator setup will be a good name value. Well, and, but that's the thing also with the way they do the tournaments. Of course, they would love the big name value stars to win every single tournament. But when you do a tournament format, most of the time, like, your stars get beat. You know, the, the PFL, they do it all the time. They'll bring in the hottest prospect free agent that the UFC or that just left the UFC or whatever. He goes into the format, and then, boom, he loses. He's out. How many times they brought Anthony Pettis over? Yeah. Never won the million, I don't think. He, he was out first fight, second fight. Shane Burgos, same thing. Down. Out. They did just bring in Derek Brunson, who wasn't a huge superstar in the UFC, but you know, definitely a notable guy. He was able to pick up a win this past week over a former, I think a two-time uh, PFL champion, right? Ray Cooper. Yeah. Ray Cooper the third. Yeah. Yeah, that was a fight I would have loved to bet on. Yeah, I told I you, man. I told you. But they wouldn't uh, it wouldn't release the odds on DraftKings, FanDuel, anything. At least in our region. I do right. think, like I said, I have noticed, like I said, other places end up getting more things. Just where we're at doesn't have the PFL, which I still think is a big reason because of that. Uh, yeah, the what happened. PFL Challenger year back. Series. Where they had a pre-taped event and the odds were still on most of your major betting platforms. Yep, still able to bet on it, even though it was already done and over. Most people already knew, and they was placing bets like crazy. Yeah, and I think they paid out eventually. It took a- uh, and- no, they just gave you like a little. They didn't pay what you put in. They gave right. you a little bonus. Let me phrase that. I got paid because out of, of mine. Yeah, you got paid quickly. Because I literally, the second the fight, the last fight ended, and that bet, that bet cash, I hit withdrawal. I've never been back on the bet MGM platform again. <laughs> Just because I feel like if I went there right now, they probably have a you owe us. Uh huh. They'll take your money back. <laughs> yeah, so I got off that very quick. So, real quick, who are you favoring over the PFL champions and the Bellator champions? Uh, just if I had to say what, there's seven, so you're going to have a. I'm going to go Bellator. Um, and maybe I'm just more familiar. Although I have watched a lot of PFL. The one matchup I can say I'm interested in, though. Do you? Th- I am gonna take Kayla Harrison over Cyborg. Uh, man, yeah. At but this point, Cyborg. I don't point, know. I, don't know. I mean, I think it's still gonna be a very interesting fight. But I don't know if you you read. That's not the fight that's gonna happen. They it's gonna be champion versus champion, and Kayla Harrison is not the PFL champion. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go with my conspiracy theory that uh, if Cyborg agrees to the fight, whoever the current champion is. Is gonna well actually that the girl is a t- double champ now. Which one? The one that beat Caleb. She won she, it again. She won it again. Did she won it again. Okay. So I'm gonna say she's gonna have a pause for commercial train. identification. I'm gonna. We should be good now. Maybe not. Like, share, and subscribe. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Also, thanks to our sponsor, Hatchet Industries. Industries. And. Hopefully liquid death one day. Bring it on. <laughs> no, I'm, I feel like the current PFL champ might come down with a touch of whatever our co-host Blake had. And I'd better make the fight. And you yeah. Get the cyborg. I mean, sorry, for pay-per-view. I, I think mean, it, pay-per-view, that's ex- viewer-wise, viewer 
nobody really knows the other champion for the PFL champion. I don't even know her name, to be honest with you. I know who Chris Cyborg is. I know who Kayla Harrison is. That's the fight to make. Um, so we'll see what happens. It will be an interim championship. <laughs> there you go. All you got to do is stop the interim title. But here's the thing. You got uh, Mercier, Olivia Mercier over Nermega Meadow. Yeah, who, who's uh, Bellator? Is Umar in the Mega Metal, right? Yeah. I don't know, man. That's a tough one for the PFL. Um, and then uh, the uh, what's the underdog that just went on Bellator the last show? Jason Jackson. I'm favoring him. Me too. He he <laughs> comes, man. Like I've been knowing Jason Jackson for a long time. I fought on a uh, a lot of Titan cards with him, you know, back in the day, and I remember. And he's from the, I mean, he's from Kill Clip down there in South Florida, and it was the Black Zillions back whenever I met him and was fighting guys from his gym like Desmond Green. But, I mean, the dude, he is always upsetting. He's always a big underdog and always upsetting. Yeah. I think you're going to see a heavy, well, if we can even bet on it, Bellator would be most of the favorites. I think so, too. One other little thing we're going to talk about before we bring on our guest, if she's done with her fashion show, whatever the hell she's doing, (laughs) in your sequence rodeo shirt. Um... Let's just have a... We're going to go too deep on this. I'm just curious to see your thought. Everyone talks about it. It's a little bit of an overused term now. Who is the MMA GOAT, in your opinion? Man, I mean... I just... I feel like you cannot go against John Jones, though. It's like... First off, this dude, he, he can be out of action for how many years and then come back and beat surreal game and make it look effortless you know still his only actual loss and and real quick did they ever get that overturned no i know they're trying to get it overturned to a no contest to get the loss off his record because he didn't lose the fight he lost by a disqualification by using a 12 to 6 elbow which is legal in mississippi now Hmm. so that's the thing man you're able to you got disqualified for a move that they're starting to venture out in most athletic commissions and make legal now. So, John Jones never lost an MMA fight legitimately and beat every top guy at the time and still beating top guys. Yeah, yeah. there's no argument here on my part. I would go Jones So you got to. If you took Jones out, then you get into the Silva GSP debatable. You got the no, mouth. No, I forgot somebody. Man, freaking Ken Shamrock. <laughs> Overall goat. I do have an odd one who I do think, and like I said, it's overused now. But if he can just win out the rest of his career, I think you're gonna have to look at Alex Pierre on that list. Man, I mean, yeah, you never know. I mean, coming in on a two-year to learn whatever he has learned in grappling, beat the people who were claiming Izzy to be the GOAT in MMA, middleweight champ, current 205 champ. There's not been a more successful two-year, yeah. you know, person to come in. Well, I mean, are there guys on the list that I can see overtaking it? Probably so. And I still think you got to put Volkanovski up there, just what he's done. you got to put Makachev up there. I don't, I don't think Makachev should be on there yet. You know what? That's what I'm saying. Not yet. Not yet. But, man, if he can keep running through some of these guys, let's just say he wipes out everybody in the lightweight division that's in the top 10 for the next couple years. I mean, how can you say no? And if Volkanovski, yeah, not everybody can go up a division and win, and win titles, well, especially when you got guys like freaking Islam and Khabib. But shouldn't that be what should separate to be yeah, a goat? Yeah, and, and I, I, mean, I agree. I agree. I mean, Jones has done it. Alex Pierre has done it. I'm not even I a agree. huge Alex Pierre fan, but him winning that 205 title. What if Volkanovski does down 35? <sighs> <That's what> <laughs> <laughs> Let me put it like this. I love Alex, but if he goes down to 35, I will bet the house against him. Against him? With that weight cut? Yeah, that's a big weight not, cut. No doubt in my mind, I will bet the house against him. Because I don't think he's... As long as he can... He's going to struggle to get to the octagon through the, uh, <laughs> down the walkway. But no, I mean, it's just a term that's getting used so much now. You know, people throw Habib in there because he's undefeated, which I don't place Habib there. I still give some uh, 
I still have a love for Silva in that category, and I don't like him, but GSP deserves to be in that category. But no, Alex Pierre right now is to me somebody who, if he can Very keep, possible. if he can hold the title till he retires at two hundred five, which he's older, so it's not like you know he can't do it. I think he should be in the conversation. I agree. All right, so we want to take our pause. All right, we're going to take a pause for an intermission. All right, we're back with my wife. First time doing the podcast with her. She did do another podcast with the uh, contender, pretenders, pretenders on, on a bender, bender, right? Pretenders on a bender. So yeah, we're back. Uh, talk a little bit about our recently TikTok famous. Oh, well, you got you didn't give her her full introduction. All right, well, that, you, that you gave her the name <laughs> that she has not used since then. Well, yeah, I need to pick up on that. So we are here with our my second time getting to talk with. Brienne, the Queen of Hearts, Hollaba. I like it. I still like the name. <laughs> well, fun fact with it, for those that don't know, my name was Hart. So when I married Kurt, I became a Hollaba, but kind of gives me that little, you know, yeah. heart in there. You could say, I like it. I feel like if you, when you get that MMA fight and we hit 500 subscribers, yeah. I know your nickname. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, we got him. We have it on video. That's not happening. If, we hit if she hits 500 subscribers, I'll let her do a uh, combat well, jiu-jitsu. But if y'all hit 500, a super, right? Yeah, a super fight, I guess. Which I do think we should be getting to here shortly once somebody somebody sitting at this table has made an offer to take over our social media. Oh. Huh. It wasn't you. No, it wasn't me. It <laughs> wasn't me. And Her? I was you. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I control our three-year-old's account that you were saying, um, but it's all him doing the work. It's not really me. I just post his videos, so I, I don't know. Well, you're I, mean, more I, than, I, can, I can try. You're more than welcome to come in here and film and get whatever you want for videos. I mean, you are at the gym majority of the time. Yeah, that's true. I don't care what the content is as long as it gets <laughs> subscribers on <laughs> So you will be Let's in charge. Let's test it out. Let, right. let me take control. So you hear that? Like all my friends, y'all better start subscribing. Because you're supporting Brie, not us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For go. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's right. a competition in our house. <laughs> so Sort of. So let's hear how... So I guess just like, I mean, obviously none of us have been... I mean, Kurt's been on TV, has his knockouts have been shown countless times. Um, I've had new viral moments in my life. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that you have to this point. I have, have a video, video that I've recorded that has like 24 million views, but I wasn't in it. Ah. So, so I'm okay not being viral. So y'all decided to, uh, <laughs> you know, y'all learn. Y'all, you know, y'all have a family of 12 or whatever y'all have now. Five. <laughs> whatever. And we're going to start with the youngest one. And we say, you know what? Social media is a big deal. Mm-hmm. He's a two year old slash three year old now that can do jujitsu mm-hmm. and actually understand, you know, actually understand the movements. And we're going to video capture this and become rich off them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's going to uh, pay his keep around the house, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> he's on his way up, man. He's on his way up. I mean, that's not any different than people that try to push their kids into baseball and football. I mean, they can say they're doing it for, oh, you need kids to do sports. And I agree with that. But when you start pushing into the travel ball and the year round, you're hoping that kid goes D1 and then goes. Absolutely. Pro. But so. here's the thing for us. Just we we don't. And never had pushed him to do anything. It's just that's the environment that he's growing up in. Yeah. I mean, that's what we do. We own two Brazilian jiu-jitsu gyms. So five days a week, that's where we're at. So in him, he, he's going to be four beginning of next year. You know, he doesn't go to school. He doesn't go to daycare. So he's with us 24-7. So we have homeschool classes throughout the day. So he's doing homeschool classes. And then we have classes during the evening. And we actually have a class that we started. And we even started this class before he was born, right? We started what we call our kinder class, which is three and four year olds. And every now and then when you might have one or two kids in the class, and then sometimes you got people call and say, hey, I want to put my kid in here. Can I, can he try it out? He's three years old. And all of a sudden we have 10 three year olds, which is not the (laughs) easiest class to run. It is the worst class to coach. But (laughs) that's why it's only a 30 minute class because Mm -hmm. you you can only keep a three year old attention for short period of time so of course now with Raiden growing up and he was actually doing the class before he was three he was doing a class when he was like two yeah I have videos actually um of him he was about one and a half because he was still wobbly walking 
but he's doing squats, trying to do push-ups. They weren't the best, but he was doing all the extra front rolls, all the things that you see in a typical jiu-jitsu warm-up, he was doing them at one and a half, barely walking able to do that so i mean he's been in it well that's because he's sitting on the sideline before he ever put a uniform on to get out on the mat and he's just watching his brothers his sisters and every other kid in the gym is doing class so it's like it's automatically being programmed in his brain so when he goes out to do his first class and we say you know for one for the kids you know one of our exercises is like a front roll just do a front roll like, okay, do a bear crawl. He and it's everything's programmed. So now that you know, like I said, he'll be four years old next year at the beginning of next year. Um, he's been doing jujitsu legitimately doing the class since he was probably about two years old, and he, he all the fundamentals is just programmed. So now, I mean, he he understands a lot of what's going on. I, I know like on his TikTok, I read a lot of the comments and stuff and a lot of people are wishing that their kids were old enough to do this and things like that and ask him when, when they should start them. And I'm like at three, you know, if you can find a gym near you, what the three-year-old class, the three and four-year-old class, they're not going to be all-stars. Like we're going over Raiden and, but again, he's grown up in the gym, but they're, they're learning basics. They're learning to take instruction from someone else and all those, you know. Um, yeah, that class is not just about learning jujitsu. Jiu-jitsu. Yes. It's a discipline yeah. aspect. Exactly. To it's, grow into it and it'd be, it's an easier tra- um, going into the mm-hmm. vibe and the, ju- the kids class going into it. Yeah. I mean, a big response, and this is not, you know, with the comments you get, a big thing is, I really believe this is, Kids are going to pretty much, at least early on, eventually they're going to fight with you and you're going to have those arguments. They're going to do kind of whatever their parents are doing. I'm not saying you have to be into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. but if you're someone who really isn't active, you don't have any hobbies of your own they can see you into, it's going to be a much more of a struggle saying, oh, well, you should go do this. Well, kids are eventually going to look and be like, well, why aren't you doing this? Or why aren't you doing something? So I think that's a big thing is like any parent who wants their kid to get into it. I was just almost trying out a class as well. Even if you don't stick with it, just to make it an easier transition for that kid. Mm -hmm. They see dad or mom doing it. Yeah. Well, now that you say that, we've had, I mean, and we still, I I can't even tell you how many parents that have signed their kid up and then said, you know what, I, I want to do this with my kid. Because how many sports can you and your kids do together? You know, you, you, yeah, you can go outside in the yard and you can play baseball, you can play football, but you cannot be on a football team with your kids unless you're like coaching. You know, you can't play baseball on a team with your kids now that your kids are in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and you are in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You're on the same team. You show up to a competition, you are both competing on the same day. Yeah, you both been... win medals. You both get on a podium with your medals and your accomplishments and take pictures. How many sports can you do that in? I don't I know. There's been any. quite a few that we've done as a family. All the kids would compete, and then Kurt's right there being our coach for each and every one of us. And if he's not competing himself, so I know there's. Well, that's then, a good and then you, to... you got kids that are like, ah. Uh, I don't know. I'm scared to compete. They're they're scared to compete. So you know what their parents do? Well, I tell you what. Ah, you know, I've never really trained Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Can I? I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna train, and I'm gonna do this competition just so to show my son I'll do it too. And I've had parents that maybe didn't even uh or don't even train, but just said, hey, um, let me purchase a uniform. Just can I purchase a month just to train because I want my son to do the competition, but I don't want him to go in alone. I want to do this competition with my son. Mm-hmm. I've had people do that. Hey, I think that's a beautiful thing. I mean, honestly, seeing Raiden get into it at such a young age, which, once again, y'all do own these gyms, y'all are here 24-7, it's made me realize that, you know, I'm never going to fo- – I mean, me as a newer parent with mm-hmm. a almost two-year-old. I don't do the whole <laughs> count in the months. I'm saying almost yeah, two. that's good. <laughs> um, I don't know if she's going to be like come here and be able to be advanced enough watching to start earlier. I know Raiden was able to, but he grew up in it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we do have our second kid on the way, and I have the thought to divide and conquer. I'll take kid A, 
<laughs> new kid can stay with the mom at home. <laughs> so I'm going to try to start bringing Ellie up here uh, a good bit just to get her into it to mm -hmm. see it. Because I do think trying to throw a child into this when you have no clue what jujitsu is, it's not... I mean, every majority of kids play baseball. Majority of kids play football, play soccer. Well, it's, yeah. def it's definitely it, a small... It's known. It's, those yeah. are known sports. I've had plenty of younger kids too, and they're worried about putting the uniform on. They think it's the scariest thing. I have literally had a kid last week, would not put it on, but he sees all the kids doing it. He mm -hmm. sees them having fun. Then he tries it, and then he does the class and realizes that the uniform is made for grips, things yeah. like that. So then they start understanding. Um, but I, I agree. Like when you first walk in the gym, you don't know what this is <laughs> until you sit and, you know, start. So what, I, so what I hear the Queen of Hearts advocating for is more no gi. Oh, that's no. really that's what i heard God. i don't even know my last <laughs> nogi competition <laughs> we train it all you yeah. be satisfied <laughs> we do nogi almost every monday for you i know every monday that i'm here for, for sure, sure. <laughs> every monday as soon as he's walking no through the door he sees me nogi need right. to just go ahead and make monday new a nogi day that's right. what we need to do and maybe i would that shut would up about it <laughs> I would never mention it again. We'd be good. Franklin, it's a nogi day. We don't have a nogi day. That's my issue. And I can't go to Franklin on Monday because I'm here. I don't want to go to Franklin anyway. It's too far away. You gotta get your hotel. All right, Franklin. I mean, Amy, nogi Mondays. There you go. It's legit. It's happening. Nogi Mondays. You're welcome to Brandon, Jesse. Oh yeah, those and guys Eddie. are I know them three will appreciate this at least. <sighs> they do nogi anyway. <laughs> oh my gosh. Most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> I finally have one. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to beat Kurt in the sparring match or in jujitsu. Although I did beat you in the uh, passing of the guard game. Did you pass my guard? No, you didn't pass mine. Oh yeah. Cause I hugged the fuck oh. out your leg. Yeah, you just locked me in half guard. <laughs> the second I heard the timer, I'm like, oh, I'm in half guard still. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm here. I just, and then I'm playing around in half guard. I don't care. I don't care. Vice, vice grips my leg. <laughs> I don't care the logic behind it. <laughs> But Stalling. I finally have worn Kurt down enough to get an official Monday Nogi. I'm very proud of that. It's only taken. What belt are you? Purple? Purple belt. It's taking that well, long to well, see, you see, not just a normal purple belt. I spent about a good right, four, four right, years right. at white belt, a good three years at blue. I had my off and on. So you, so, <laughs> you're a couple If, if I had stayed with it, because you started, and I came to the... Came, came, <laughs> I came to the gym uh, when it used to be on Ward Line. Mm -hmm. After you had been there, I think it was before, or maybe right after your first fight, is when me and you actually became like we were always we met each other. We were cool. Kurt didn't say a word for the first six months that I met him. Does he ever <laughs> pause on that real quick? Because I have people that come up to me and they were like, "I don't know if Kurt likes me." He, my own mother, one time or many times, have said, "Does." Does Kurt not like me? What's wrong? He never talks. I'm like, that's just him. He do he doesn't talk. He, I mean, he's talking on the podcast now. That's the most I've like ever heard him lot. talk. Segue on that. Has your mom ever asked if I like her? Oh my her? gosh. I don't know. She hasn't. She watched the last podcast that I was here on. But you know, she did she ever mention that? I'm just kidding. No. Or she's trying to ignore she, it. <laughs> she does ignore it. She, like I said, was turning red listening to that podcast and... Well, don't worry, Miss Queen of Heart. I do ask about you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> no, you are right, though, on the fact that, like, I met Kurt when he was in the skate park days. I don't even know if you had started training that. I think you started training. Nope, I was not training after. when we first met. Yeah. Because I remember, I think I started training whenever we watched the Kimbo Slice and the Tank Abbott fight. I had just started yeah. training like that week or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> so then I had, and I ended up going to the gym probably about th two or three months after that. Mm -hmm. And I just think about it, and I don't think my, it was never a goal to be a professional fighter. I mean, of course, I think if I would have stayed in it then, I would have had more fights, just especially with the group of fucking guys that were in at that point of well, the gym. Yeah. I mean, Hanging out with your... Buddies, they're all fighting. It's, so it not kinda... even. It was literally, <laughs> and like I said, this it. I remember going into the Ward Lawn Gym, half yell, uh Jiu Jitsu. You know, you learned your fundamentals. He taught a actual Jiu Jitsu class. Then he left, and then it was sparring class, and it was Chris Pham, J Mark, Scott Smith was still training at that point. 
Brennan Allen, that fucking 15 year old, you know, there was no really like, okay, we're going to learn the one, like, we actually do drills and warm up now. Back then it was gloves, <laughs> mouthpiece. Was the fun thing to do. And man. it was just fun thing to do. So, you know, that's why I say at least I did, you know, learn real quick if I at least had somewhat of heart or toughness for this because you got the shit beat out of you back then. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> so I do think if I would have stuck with it as a white belt then, I don't think I would be a professional fighter. I do think. I'd probably be a black belt by now, though. Or at least, well, be yeah. close. Probably, yeah. I mean, so, yeah. That's probably one of the regrets. I just yeah, wish I would have stayed with it. you started way sooner than me, and I'm purple. <laughs> so, you would... Oh, uh, I, 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 I already know. Me. I won't see my brown belt for at least six more years. <laughs> <laughs> I already know this. Yeah, oh, yeah, because you're only going to come to Monday class. No key. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been making Mondays and Wednesdays. I've been coming twice a week, and I go to Friday in Hammond. I'm making okay. three days a week right now, training. Oh, there you go. Two of those will be no key now. <laughs> Because Friday's no game. Yeah, because you're fighting next year, right? I am. I am going to do a fight. I will not back out of my word. I, That's exciting. Hey. It's going to be know. cool it's seeing you in the cage again. Yeah, I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> it'll, it'll be something. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, I am going to. I did say I would do it. I do have an itch to want to do it. I don't know if, you know, like I am getting, I'll be 33 next year. I mean, I'm still younger compared to him, but <laughs> yeah, I don't have, you know, to me, it's like, once I hit a certain window, it's like, talking about getting into a fight it might be a little bit difficult to do. Although Billy, out of the Ferguson gym, does, uh... Yep, he's still, he's he still wanting to well. fight. He's 60 and does well. Still wanting to fight. <laughs> <laughs> he's not quite 60. He, he's 49. <laughs> he Billy, does his thing out there. Billy, though. I like you. You're tough as nails. You have a lot of good skill. If I had to guess your age by looking at you, I'm going to go 63. So, just so we're clear. <laughs> I love Mr. Billy. He's oh, no, he's a good cool dude. dude. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really cool guy. All right, Bree. So, we got, so how's your second podcast appearance going so far? <laughs> it's going good. You'll be in this video shot. Don't worry. Yes. Yeah, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> we're good to go. Last time the angle was off. Yeah. But let's get back to this TikTok famous three-year-old that we're talking about right <laughs> and, and let's talk about the video that that made that happen for him really because I feel like that's the thing man a lot of people of course and there was a movie that I watched um, and I think it was you ever seen the movie the old dads great great movie <laughs> Bill Burr in that movie was yep. fantastic. That was a really, really good movie. But one of the um, quotes or something was in that movie. And I, whatever business they had, the guy that took over, he was saying something about we live in a world where everybody thinks they're famous or something like that. Because you got TikTok, you got Instagram, you got YouTube. It's not hard to, well, I, I'm not going to say it's not hard, but. We're in a world where everybody's doing it. Yeah, back in the day, you had to be a true movie star, yeah. or you had to be right. a actor or something. You weren't, there was no viral sensation to be right. well-known. But do you remember the quote from that movie where he said mm -hmm. that? Yeah, man. The, uh, the guy that took over the company, or cheated him out of the yeah, company. Yeah, and, he, and then he fired said, him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of the things that he said, and I'm like, man, that's just so true. It's like today's day, with all of the social media, you know, everybody has a chance. But it's crazy because you, you just never know what video you post, what platform is going to blow up. And for Raiden, he is three years old and he did his very first Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu competition, right? But it was the way he competed. It was some of the, the skill that he showed in that video. And being in Jiu-Jitsu, of course, there's so many um, Jiu-Jitsu pages I guess you can call it, you know, that that can that picked that up and kind of like ran with it and tagging him in it also. And being that he has TikTok and Instagram and YouTube started to blow up. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, how many um, views and stuff does that? Um, his one video, his very first video has over 3 million, 3, 3 million point four 3 views. 4 million. Yeah, 3.4 million. Million and views, then just so. steady going, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, he starts to blow up with the followers. You know, thousands after thousands after thousands. And next thing you know, it's what it's called monetized. Mm -hmm. So next thing you know, he's monetized. And there, and yeah, there you so go. So now he actually gets paid for his videos. He's 
Um, so, I mean, he's paying rent. He's <laughs> <laughs> three years old. <laughs> but I think what, why it picked up so well, because one, one thing I read, um, somebody made a comment like, in a few years, this won't be relevant because everybody's going to know about BJJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So, him doing Jiu Jitsu is not going to be relevant. But I kind of disagree because, like I said, we have a class for three and four year olds. However, the, what's kind of setting him apart right now is he's only three. Competitions, they will not take you until you're four. Now, he was able to compete in our in-houses, but that's because it's our own affiliated gyms. So we're able to allow him to train and compete in that. But AGF, all um, ADCC, right? They won't take you until, I think... Four. Yeah, I know AGF is four, but ADCC might even be six. Yeah. Um, it might be a little older. But you can't be... A three-year-old competing so the fact that he is competing at three and he's been competing since what his first tournament was in july so um well, he's now had two. a lot has to do with his gimmick his personality his name mm -hmm. you know what he's doing like it couldn't fit him better right, right? because his name is raiden off of mortal Kombat, <laughs> right the lord of lightning and then middle name is thor which is the god of thunder. Mm -hmm. So you got Raiden and Thor. And then his uh, his it's, older brother came up with the name. I was going to say his big brother gave him up. Zayden came up <laughs> and he's like, he's a Thornado. So I'm like, we're going to roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> so he's Raiden Thornado. Yeah. And another thing, saying that comment that that won't be relevant, that kind of depends on Raiden in general. I mean, yeah. if he ends up taking mm -hmm. to social media, he'll have a platform. Mm -hmm. If his personality stays what it is now, whether or not Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is well-known or not, it's still going to be connecting with this person right. who may enjoy this and right. who knows where his page may go. Right. And also, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is growing and it will continue to grow. I do not believe it's ever going to be in the household of baseball football soccer right i think it can grow yeah. i don't know if it can ever crack into that i mean and it might not i mean i mean because it, here's the thing it's not an easy sport to do yeah you know it's not an easy sport to do yeah well and for raiden specifically he's had what six competition matches now counting gi and no gi He's lost every single well, of one course, of them. But he's three but years old. Exactly. He's, he's three years old. So you wouldn't believe how many supportive people there are from all over the world. I mean, I get messages from people in Australia, like other places that I've never even heard of, sending me, you know, things for him to wish him luck on his journey. But he's out there competing and he's he's trying every match he might lose and i made a little video of him um you know the other kid winning each time and it was just kind of a motivational thing for him like to promote and um you know let people know like don't give up that's how you lose is just quitting and so many people messaged him personally um and was thanking him for that video because they were like here you are at three years old have not got your hand raised in six matches and every single time you walk off with a smile at three. And that's the biggest part is his age and he's able to take a loss and just be happy for being out there. And we know he's trying his best. Like he's a beast out there. So he's trying. And of course he wants to win. But at the same time, I almost think Raiden's kind of blown up because he does give everybody hope. Like he also sets that image of, look, I'm losing every match. I'm a three-year-old kid, but I'm still walking off with a smile after every every one of my matches. And like I said, many people are saying they almost quit jiu-jitsu, but because they came across that video, they're going to try it again. They're yeah. going to give another shot at it. I mean, like you said, walking off with a smile means it's pure. Yeah. It's real. It's yeah. not, hey, we're gym owners and our kids are going to train no matter what. I right. mean, cause you, yeah, they got people that do that. That's mm -hmm. the kids throw the tantrum on the mat or don't mm -hmm. have that yes. same thought. You can tell with those videos, it's real. And yeah. that's what resonates with people and more than anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, the worst thing you can do is try to force that or make that happen. Because it's right. going to always come across. It's not going to come across cringy or not right. true. And that's Raiden's true self at three. And he just mm -hmm. loves what he's doing. Yeah. And that's another thing. I've, I've had a few comments of people saying like, take him out of this sport and I actually got in an argument with someone today because they're like he's a loser all he keeps doing is losing 
Um, what's that going to set for him? His confidence is going to be low. And I'm like, he, he's probably done more for the world. Like I said, he's given people confidence to keep going. He's probably done more the, for the world than you have as an adult. And he's only three. Like, the fact that he's not getting his hand raised doesn't make him a loser. If he were to quit the sport in a few years, even just from losing, you know, then that's one thing. He's giving up. But the fact that he goes out to the next match and gives it his all, like, he's not a loser. He's, he's trying more than... Most people try for their dreams, so. No. Well, let's hope that the person that commented on that was a kid. Ugh, I'm hoping. I wish I could say they were. They were. Because any adult <laughs> that's in their mom's basement with Cheeto dust on their fingers, right. typing to hate on a kid doing anything. Oh, that, that happens all the time. Yeah. That's what I tell her also. No, it happens to adults. <laughs> I've seen, like, you know, people can come out adults all they want. If you take the time. To truly write a negative comment about a three-year-old. That was just this morning. So. That is <laughs> shittier than anyone. Yeah, it's already bad enough if you're someone who's a hater online. That is just another level of... Yeah, the way the world it. is, man. People do it. But yeah. like I said, I, he has... He's got 20,000 followers on TikTok so far. And I mean, every night we wake up and he's gained 1,000 each night. Um, lately, he's just been blowing up. But everybody's so supportive so I'll, I'll take the few negative comments and actually other people kind of jump on them for me i don't even have yeah. to speak my mind to them you know and let them know how ridiculous they sound but um i, I just I, I love that he's giving people something to look forward to or a lot of people are like please tag me when he gets his hand raised things like that like mm -hmm. they're so invested in this journey with him so i don't know it's really exciting to see and, you know, we got to get y'all's YouTube uh, yeah. channel. Can we just take a Raiden platform? On Raiden's account. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to... Uh... All Raiden Thor's um, <laughs> subscribers, go follow the podcast. <laughs> they need some love. Yeah. We're trying. Yeah, we're I trying. mean, end of the day, like I said, what I love for this, I do think there is, in our podcast, actual... There is an enjoyment. Whether this does anything or not, I enjoy. Oh, yeah, we sure. have these conversations. Of course, the goal would be to actually be mentioned or, you know, a top hit just from a, you know, it's rewarding to see that. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you know, if it happens, great. I do want it to happen. Let's be very clear here. <laughs> and Kurt needs a retirement plan anyway. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> hey, I feel like I can sit here and just talk to people all day. Yeah, like Coming I said, from yeah, the guy yeah, who yeah, just yeah. saying doesn't talk to people. There was, I can talk. I, you can. I can say there were, I have two very good friends of mine, and not that you and them ever got that's like close, they were just always at the same place. And like, they don't know what's up with Kurt. I, I guess this is years ago. Like, I mean, at this point, I've known him for 10 years, technically, and I still don't know if I've heard him say more than X amount of words. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but it's just, like I said, once you get actually into I guess the circle or actually actually knowing Kurt no he'll he'll talk he's a you know great friend great person all that but I can see where from the outside because I've been there when you're first meeting him it is like <laughs> this dude's a dick <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry man sorry I'm not, <laughs> you're not. Just, I might not just I don't know oh I will say something funny um as quiet as he is Sometimes I find myself like before big interviews that he's gonna have or things like that I'm like don't forget to talk about this or don't forget to say this or make sure you don't say this and Somebody will call him for an interview and I'm listening and I'm like dang he is good Like he can speak on the fly like wasn't always like that. I no. know but he, yeah his Years and years and years. Y'all yeah. need to go months back and, and watch and months his months. um what the tryout that uh, video. Ultimate, my very first <laughs> ultimate fighter tryout video <laughs> Was probably the worst speaking uh, it was of anybody. Bad. <laughs> I just <laughs> sit here. I'm like, um, yeah. My name is <laughs> Kurt Hullabaugh. Bri, I think we got your first video idea for our TikTok. It's gonna be the before and after of Kurt's interviews. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, because I I would worry about him, and I'm like, he he's so quiet. Like, is he gonna open up? I'm like. Your fans want to see your personality. They want to see you open up. They want to see you talk. And then he gets on the interviews and he's like, nonstop talking, yeah. talking clear, not gibberish. Like I find myself stuttering sometimes on here. And sometimes it's hard when, when you got a lot of people around you. Somebody puts a camera in your face. It's not always the easiest thing in the world. 
So it just, it definitely takes time and time again of interviews and stuff like that. I mean, you can come here and put a camera in my face, and, and if I'm not like prepared, prepared, I'm probably gonna stutter a little bit and and not actually say things the way that I would like to say them. Because anytime I go over something in my head and I start talking, and then I start talking out loud, I can't say the same thing sometimes. I'm like, dang, man, I said it a lot better when I was saying it in my head. But So I had an idea for y'all. Y'all can um, invite Raiden Thornado Hollabaugh to the podcast. And then we'll post it on Raiden's <laughs> YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> but you're talking about the numbers he's got. I'm like, hey, we're having one as a guest. <laughs> Y'all are going to understand why his nickname's Tornado if that happens, though. <laughs> Just get him a root beer and he'll be good. Yeah, there you go. Love root beer. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's other things. Like, I'll post just because he's not fighting every single day. So um, I do post, like, just everyday life videos of Raiden. And it's so funny because people will go on there and they're like, oh, hey, champ. It could be nothing related to fighting. And um, they're still talking about waiting to see his wins. But there is um, a cheers video of Kurt with a beer and Raiden with a root beer. And they're doing a cheers. And that, that video alone has like 20,000 views and people commenting. But they're like, can't wait for you to uh, cheers with dad after a win. Things like that. So <laughs> we're going to have to do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. That's always good stuff. But that, that's the thing, man. Like, social media is crazy. You never know what's going to blow up. Yeah. <laughs> the downfall of social media is it gives so many people a voice that yep. you... Yeah. <laughs> but you got to hit the go with the bad. It's all part of it. <laughs> For sure. Super, you got anything other than your son's TikTok that uh, you want to shout out or mention? You got going um, on right now? I don't. Other than your... Uh, Just the... New, new outfit for your rodeo? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Brennan, thank you for that. Um, but no, I, I don't really have anything going on. I know um, there's some jiu-jitsu tourn tournaments coming up uh, the first of the year, so our family is going to be looking at that um, and hope that goes well. And I kind of hope, you know, y'all don't get to 500 subscribers anytime soon because I, I don't know about that MMA fight. <laughs> You're not MMA fight anyway, so you ain't got to worry about it. Oh, darn. We're good. My, my coach said no. If we don't get MMA, we're getting combat jiu-jitsu. Maybe a super fight in a cage. I might let that happen. Combat jiu-jitsu. We'll see. We'll talk about it. <laughs> you just got your no-gi Monday, so. All right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> take one win at a time. I give you an inch, don't take a mile. <laughs> touche, touche. I hear that all the time. <laughs> so, well, let's we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Episode 21 of the Contender and Pretenders. We got to eat some gumbo. Well, yeah. you got to eat some gumbo <laughs> on the... Uh, yeah, on the podcast, you know. Like I said, I got to give you credit. Got to call out, called out. Groovy Land of Venado brought my wife, Brienne, the queen of hearts on to talk <laughs> about our three-year-old Thornado, who is an absolute tornado, tears everything up. And so that perfectly fits his character. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you all for having me. Of course. Until next time, like, share, and subscribe. The Contender and the Pretenders, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.